Crafty fam, it's DIY Alex, and I am back with another farmhouse DIY sign tutorial that I am so excited to show you guys. You are going to love the style of this one. If you were around for Tuesday's Live, this is totally different than the one we did with that sign, so I think you guys are really going to like it. So give me a hot second so that I can share this around so that some more friends can join us, and then we are gonna get this party started. So, me just a second and in the comments let me know if you can hear me okay and see me okay because you guys know um like this happens every single time i go live as soon as i was setting up my live today <laughs> one of my neighbors started mowing right next to me so you know usually there's a lawnmower revving at some point around my neighborhood during the live especially when i don't have a microphone <laughs> so i want to make sure that everyone can hear me hey guys good deal welcome back <laughs> In case you were just watching, I uh, just launched a giveaway that it started today. Well, I actually, actually, I guess it started yesterday, September 1st, and it goes until September 6th, 2021. So if you're watching the replay, it may or may not still be open, but if it is, definitely make sure to go back and watch that video so you can enter to win a $300 box of my favorite craft supplies. Good deal, good deal. Okay, let me share this again <laughs> on my Facebook page and the Facebook group and probably in 143's Facebook group and we're gonna get this started. Plus, there are some sales going on today. So again, if you're watching this live, they'll be applicable to you, but if you're watching this on the replay, they may or may not be applicable. But that's kind of what inspired this sign. So I'll explain all that here in just a moment. Of course, you can always watch us on the replay if you guys are you know, busy or if you have to bow out, but I'm really excited about this sign. I had zero plans to go live today and craft with you, but I was just really, really inspired this morning, and so I decided to go for it. And I've done a fair amount of prep um, for this sign, so I will walk you through what I did for that so that you know what to do if you wanna make your own as well. Um, but that will make our craft go a little bit quicker just because doing stuff like waiting for paint to dry can take a while. So I've already done some of that stuff. Oh, did the whole thing not copy? Darn it, okay. sure that's the right yeah there we go make sure I didn't mess up my link there sorry y'all normally when I schedule this I just go ahead and schedule the uh, URLs but when I don't schedule my lives I don't have any way to share them in the other groups except just to type them myself there we go oh Facebook is such a little booger sometimes I don't know if you guys experience that <laughs> as much as I do since I'm always working on Facebook but I'll tell you what Facebook is a little sneaky sneaky always messing me up there we go all right and then let me let 143 know that we are live because I did use the chalk paint on um, that just came out this week I used the chalk paint on the sign as well as on the wood beads I don't know if you guys have seen the wood bead trend but I am obsessed with them I bought some of them last year for some Christmas crafts and then I had a stroke of genius today when I decided to use them in this project so I think you're really really gonna like them All right, good deal. I think we're ready to rock and roll. All righty. Hello, hello, welcome. Oh, Crystal, welcome. First time on the live. I'm so glad that you are here. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> 
uh, Melanie agrees with me that uh, Facebook is a little sneaky snake. I agree with you, Melanie. Um, welcome, Crystal. I'm so glad that you're here. Let me grab the Rafflecopter link for you. Or actually, Kayla, if you're available, would you mind dropping that link? Um, I'm glad that you are on this live, Crystal, because we were just talking about it just a second ago. Oh, welcome. Is it Taya? Is that how you say your name? Taya Elizabeth? She said she finally caught a live. I think that you were just saying that you'd never been on a live before yesterday in the group, weren't you? <laughs> so that's perfect timing. Well, good, good. I'm so glad you guys are here. And I do have a uh, phone call at four o'clock, so I don't have a crazy amount of time to work on this project, but I think it's going to be really easy because... I've already got a lot of prep done. So let's talk about what I've already done for our sign. And then we'll get into this huge pile of vinyl in front of me. <laughs> so let me send y'all up to the overhead camera and we will talk about it. And in fact, let me, well, okay, here we go. No, A, B, there we go. So now you can see my face over there in the corner and sorry about my laptop peeking out of there. <laughs> Ty, oh, okay. How do you pronounce your name? I tried, I try to pronounce y'all's names right if I can. Uh, welcome, Lori. I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pin the link from Kayla. That is the link to the giveaway. So if you just saw my live or if you're not a part of my Facebook group and you didn't know about the giveaway, um, Kayla just commented the link for you guys so that you know where to enter. Oh, thank you, thank you. I bought that love sign at a um, TJ Maxx. So it's actually not something that I made, but I bought it a few years ago actually for my wedding shower and then I never ended up using it. So I decided to add it to my craft room because it was just perfect with the little aesthetic I've got going on in here. The edges of this are still wet from my second coat, but this is gonna be the base of our sign. Uh-oh, does this look frozen to you guys? Goodness gracious, come on. My cameras have been difficult. I don't know why they're um, freezing. Thanks, Lori. I sublimated this before I left for the for vacation. Hang on, y'all. Sorry. I think we're having some te technical difficulties. Is that better? Okay, I'm not frozen on this one, but on my app, it looks like my overhead camera may be frozen. So give me just a second. I'm really... Oh, oh. Okay. We're having problems, y'all. <laughs> um, my overhead camera is just totally giving me problems. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Is it Tia? Is that closer? Um, I'm gonna try to fix my overhead camera real quick, guys. Okay, I hate that. I hate when technology hates me. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be difficult. All right, guys, sorry for the technical difficulty. Let me get reconnected to my other phone here. And hopefully this will work because I really want you guys to be able to see overhead. Yay, okay. It's working. Give me just a second to get replugged in. Technology is great until it's not, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's just a pain in the butt. Now you're looking super crooked. There we go. Why do you look like that? Oh, okay. Maybe when I screw it in. Yeah, that's better. Okay. It's not perfect. It's not quite how I had it angled before, but it'll work. It'll work. All right. Good deal. So luckily I have two cameras so that when something freezes, <laughs> I am all set to go. A, B, there we go. Hopefully that's better. Can you see my hands now? Good deal. All right, sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> I know, does technology ever like me? Good question, good question, that's so true. Yes, thank you, Kayla. This um, wood blank is from Amazon. This was just a wood round. It used to be this color. And I've done two coats of the StarCraft chalk paint in gray on this already. So that's why it's got a pretty good coat on it. Um, you guys have heard me talk about the chalk paint a ton this week because I'm obsessed with it. Um, and this is two coats of it. And this coverage is perfect. Like there was a lot of imperfections in this wood because it is a very thin wood round. So I did want to let you know that because I know a lot of times when you think of like the door hangers, they're a lot thicker. Um, this one's very thin. And it had a lot of imperfections because, I mean, it's just, you know, cheap craft wood. Um, but honestly, the paint on it looks amazing. So, uh, <laughs> Melanie said my husband is team lead for his IT group. Uh, yeah, I can imagine that that would be a headache. So, anyway, um, 
yeah, I did two coats of paint already on this. And then I'm also going to be adding a handle to the top of this wood round when we're finished using these wood beads. And so these wood beads used to just be raw wood. And I stuck them on this skewer and I painted them with just one coat of the chalk paint. So there's a few areas that are not quite as even. I don't know how well y'all can tell that, um, but it looks good enough for me and they're just gonna go on the handle. So I decided not to worry about it too much. So that's what I've already done. So this has one coat of paint on it and the um, and I, I thought I'd show you guys my ingenuity. I flipped over two medicine cups and laid my skewer on all of it. <laughs> and just spread my beads out and that's why I let them dry today um and then I did two coats of paint on this now I know I don't have a picture of the uh, full file to show you guys this little um fall truck that we're gonna do but y'all it is super cute we're also going to be using the um the glitter sunflower pattern that was the pattern of the month at 143 vinyl last month as well as some pumpkin plaid and I can't remember the name of this one but this is one of Mr. Crafty Pants's patterns so I'm incorporating three different pattern vinyls today just to play around with some pattern vinyl and see how it looks plus pattern vinyl is on sale today which is also what inspired this project so there's just like a hundred reasons to do this project it's going to be really fun and we're going to layer it using parchment paper so if you guys have not seen the parchment paper hack this will change your life and if you have then you already know exactly what i'm talking about because it's amazing so let me grab my weeding tools i intended to weed uh all this before the live but you know what guys life happens life happens so i decided i'd go ahead and weed it live and I um, did link the file for this project in the description if you guys want to check it out yourselves. I will warn you uh, that this, this file has a lot of individual pieces. Um, so it is not the easiest, pardon me, it's not the easiest file to work with. Um, I wasn't terrible by any means, but I had to like piece everything together. So if you're a newer crafter, you may want to consider getting an easier file to work with. Um, but if you are looking for a little bit of a challenge and you're up for it, this file is super, super cute. Um, it's basically a truck with a pumpkin and a sunflower in the back of it. And then over top of it, it's gonna say, welcome fall. So it's super adorable. It gave me all the farmhouse vibes, which is why I picked it for the project. But then when I downloaded it, it took me a little while to get everything all settled. So like I said, not super hard. It just is not, it's not the best beginner friendly file, I guess is the best way to put it. So this pumpkin plaid is actually going to be an offset for our welcome fall that goes in the center. And I'm using, I, I feel like this color is called olive. I can't remember. It's a newer Starcraft HD color. But how stinking cute is this going to be? Oh, thank you. Is it yeah, Yesenia? Yesenia? <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but thank you. I love I love using this in different ways and oh my gosh, it just uh, gives me all the farmhouse vibes and I'm really, really pumped. So I think this color is the color I was talking about. I want to say this is called Olive Starcraft HD, but I actually forgot to look it up. It's one of the newer colors they released a couple months ago. But when I was looking through all of my craft supplies, I was like, this is perfect. It matches the pumpkin plaid so well. So I knew it was going to be a perfect fit. Don't you love that when a project just like comes together because I knew I wanted to use pumpkin plaid in this project but then I was like well what color for the center so I walked over to my vinyl rack and I was looking at all my colors and bam this one just hit me because it's perfect yeah so fun yeah and so what I'm actually doing is I'm using the offset as the pattern um, with a solid center does that make sense so it will go in the middle like this it keeps curling up on me so it will go around that like that um that way you can for sure read the lettering that's a really important tip when working with pattern vinyl is that an offset or something basically as a background is really super important for making sure that you can read the pattern vinyl because when you try to cut words out of pattern vinyl it is very hard to read so if you add an offset or something to it that makes it a, a ton easier so much easier to read Oh, good. I said your name right. I try, guys. I try to get your names right the best that I can. <laughs> but of course, I'm far from perfect and I don't always do it. 
Those are some little leaves going on the side of our truck. Yes, I love 143 vinyl too. So while I'm weeding, since there's not that much to talk about there, um, let's chit chat about the sales going on today. So I make sure you guys know about them. So 143 is doing a pattern and printable sale. So basically their pattern vinyl, pattern HTV, and their printable vinyl and their printable HTV are all on sale, which is amazing. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I mixed up my scrap pile and my good pile. There we go. Um, so if you want to check that out, you can um, use the code PRINT10 to get the 10% off. And that goes until midnight tonight. Hey, Kim, welcome. Chris is anxious to see the, the, oh my gosh, anxious to see the final product. I have 12 of those thin wood rounds and I picked up all the star craft paint yesterday. Now I need ideas. Well, listen, Krista, I'm here for you. I've already posted a project. Um, on Tuesday, I went live with 143 on Monday, and here's my third one this week. So I am all about that chalk paint. You guys are going to love it. Oh, welcome, Sydney. Tastefully Frugal is my friend, Sydney, and she's amazing. She's a 143 Vinyl VIP as well. So make sure you guys go follow her if you don't already know her. And Kayla is going to drop those links because Kayla Norton is the bomb.com, in case you guys didn't already know that. Thank you, Kayla. She is dropping you the links to all of the stuff that's on sale. So there's printable vinyl printable HTV and pattern vinyl and pattern HTV, <laughs> which I know is a lot of different things. So there's four different links to that sale. If you guys want to check that out, um, I did not link them in the description only because if you guys are watching this after September 2nd, 2021, then the sale may not be on. So I didn't want to put them in the description and confuse you. So um, if you are watching this live, then go click the links in the chat right now. If you want to check this sale out. Okay, guys, so I'm a little nervous about this one. I cut this one without a test cut like a bad girl, but this is the glitter sunflower pattern that was um, that was the pattern of the month at 143 last month. And glitter vinyl, as you guys know, can be a real bear to cut. Um, so I cut it and I didn't do a test cut like a bad girl and it looks like I may regret that, which I kind of thought I might. Every time I do this, I always say I'm going to do a test cut and then I misbehave and I didn't do it. Taya, Taya, <laughs> what did I say it was? I think Taya. I want to buy all the paint, but I'm waiting to finish a few things. I hear you. Listen, there's a million different craft supplies you could buy at any moment. Robin said, I bought a new printer and can't figure out how to connect it to the internet. So I can't use printable vinyl right now. Oh no, Robin. Have you looked up a tutorial on YouTube? A lot of times people who have that specific printer may have a tutorial out there for you um, on how to use it. Oh, maybe I just haven't gotten over to the flower yet. Nope, it's gonna be stubborn. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna go over and grab my Cricut Bright Pad. I, I will be right back and that hopefully, hopefully will help us weed this a little easier. <laughs> okay. So this is the Cricut Bright Pad 2. This thing is awesome. First of all, because it's cordless, which is amazing. So that makes it super easy to cart around and it looks like it's not gonna help us. Oh, sometimes these pads help because they shine light through the vinyl. But when you have something like glitter vinyl, honestly, it's just, it's just not very easy. Let's try a different corner and see if we can start with the bigger sunflower. Yep, unfortunately, this guy's not gonna help us today. Oh no, Melanie said she lost a sheet of a discontinued color a couple weeks ago. That's so disappointing, Melanie, I'm sorry. Okay, stick that out of the way. And y'all are just gonna watch me struggle. That's just how this is gonna go down. <laughs> There's a few of our little petals sticking out there. So typically with this Style Tech glitter vinyl, because this is basically just printed on glitter vinyl is the only difference. And typically what I use for this vinyl is glitter vinyl more pressure. That's what I used to use on my previous maker, but I have found on the Maker 3 that that doesn't quite cut it all the way through. So I need to do some experimenting to see what setting works a little bit better. A lot of times after that, I go into the light cardstock setting. That's what I usually use next. And y'all, if this is going to be too difficult, I may just recut it while we're chatting. I hate to run around because that's not <laughs> what I had hoped for this live, but 
I don't want to spend 30 minutes trying to weed this flower. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's worth it, but sometimes it's not. Let's see. If we can get this guy going. And luckily, I always buy two sheets of this um, because sometimes these kinds of errors happen, including to me. <laughs> so um, I do tend to buy two sheets in case I make mistakes. And obviously, this didn't even take up like even a whole sheet. So I still have plenty on the original one. But um, that may be our saving grace here, y'all. Yeah, see, that's not working too well. Okay. Well. While we are talking, I am going to pull up another cut. Kayla said, I have found glitter HTV more pressure works for the glitter vinyl. Cool. Well, that might be something good to consider. Okay. I'm going to send you guys back up to just me so that we can recut this H or this vinyl. And then uh, we'll get this party started because all I have left to do is this truck. And that's the last piece. So let me grab my Cricut. Give me a hot second. We'll get this show on the road. And of course, I put my Cricut off the table because I didn't think I was going to need it. <laughs> Isn't that how it always works? Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to scoop my beads are all the way dry. So I'll scoot those out of our way. Y'all get to watch me be the hot mess express. <laughs> a couple of you guys were like, I miss you and Heather going live on 143 as the hot mess express. And I'm like, oh no guys, don't worry. I still am the hot mess express. <laughs> oh goodness. But that's okay. You guys will just get to, I guess my cricket is right underneath the camera. So you don't get to quite see it. Maybe you will when I flip the lid up. It's just underneath the uh, underneath the camera there, so y'all won't be able to see it. But I'm assuming if you're watching this live, you've probably cut glitter vinyl before. But if not, you'll watch me experiment. So here's what the full sheet looks like. Like, tell me, tell me that you're not obsessed with this vinyl. Look at it. It's so pretty. I love this stuff. And I was like, what can I use this on? Because it's so pretty, but sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get a little paralyzed by sometimes, like I don't, I buy really pretty things, but then I don't know, like, I don't know what to do with it, you know? So I racked my brain. <laughs> That's right, Kayla. I racked my brain on what I could do with it so that, um, you know, I could find a project that it would fit in. So I searched, I think like sunflower, fall craft or something like that. And um, that's how I found this file on Creative Fabrica. There we go. There's the method. Kayla said, I just have to take the blame for everything now. And she's right. I do. Because <laughs> I'm the only one going live. So I'm the only, the only hot mess there is. Okay. I'm going to try light cardstock because that's usually the setting that I go up from, um, up from glitter vinyl. And we'll see how that works. And in fact, I'm going to go back in and add a star. So since I'm doing a test cut, let's talk about test cuts. Um, whenever you're working with a new material, you should always do a test cut, even though sometimes you don't because you're a rebel like me. Um, and what I do to do a test cut is I go into the basic shapes panel and I usually add a star and I make it one inch wide. So you don't, it doesn't need to be huge. We just need a test shape to try the test cut out to see if the setting that we chose worked. So you add that star to your canvas and then you could just make it a different color than the rest of the project so that it cuts all by itself. And what you're going to do is you're going to try the test cut or the cut setting out that you think you're going to need for the vinyl on that one little star. And then that way, if it doesn't work, you've only wasted literally one square inch of vinyl instead of wasting a bunch of vinyl that of course is precious and we don't want to mess up. Hopefully... My mat won't knock into my tripod. Okay, good. <laughs> my Cricut Maker 3 measures the mat. If you have a third generation machine, you probably already know it does that. And then we press go. So we'll see if this little star comes off our mat easily. I can, well, I'll just wait because I don't want to start weeding that just yet. Mm. 
Yeah, exactly. BZ247 said, me too. It's like, I want it for the best project and then I don't use it. I agree. So that's what I was like, we got to find something to use. And to me, since it's fall, sunflowers make a lot of sense. Like cut a sunflower out of a sunflower. That's okay, Carol. Welcome. Yes, Krista, you're right. We did do a live and Mr. Crafty Pan showed up at the live and literally Heather and I screamed on the camera. Like I have never probably been so caught off guard off anything ever. Okay. So now that I've got a test cut, let me show y'all in the overhead camera what this looks like. And I know you can't see it. The little star cut in this upper left-hand corner, but look how easily that peels off my carrier sheet or off my backing. So I know that was a good cut setting. Another thing that you can do is if you actually peel back the whole corner itself, if I can get it to peel that way. Do you see how the blade just barely cut a little star into the corner? I don't even know if you guys can really see that very well, but it just barely cut a star into that corner. So that means that's a good cut setting because if it cuts super deep into the corner of the vinyl, then you probably won't be able to get your vinyl off of the backing when it goes to weed it. So that means that we have a solid cut setting here. So I'm gonna go back to Cricut Design Space and I'll identify the mat that I need. Use light, oh, well, I gotta edit it actually. Because now I need to move the um, little flowers over so they don't, they don't um, hit that star. We'll click done. And now we're ready to recut our flower. And while our flower is cutting, I will weed the um, truck. Thanks for all your patience, y'all. Normally I try to be pretty prepared, but life happens. <laughs> all right, all ready to cut. You go back to your comments. Heather said, is it possible to add another complete order with 143 vinyl? Because now I need some supply vinyl. Absolutely, Heather, absolutely it is. Sorry if that's a little bit loud, y'all. It might be with my Cricut cutting until it's finished. But yes, Heather, if you need to add something else to your order, um, if you've already ordered recently, you can, um, like if it still hasn't shipped yet, you can actually ask them to combine your order by um, asking them to do that in the order comments and then adding your order number in your new orders comments. And sometimes they are able to ship your order together so that you don't have to pay shipping twice, which is awesome. So look how easily this StarCraft HD weeds, you guys. That was so, so simple. Now, another thing about this file that I found a little bit tricky, let me grab these little pieces here. There we go is that this back area of the truck, like the truck bed, had a bunch of little pieces around the sunflowers because the sunflowers and the pumpkin go back here. And it had a ton of little pieces. So after I welded the whole thing together, I went into contour and I deleted a lot of the cut lines back here just because I didn't want to mess with a ton of little tiny vinyl pieces. I knew they were gonna be too small for the vinyl to cut, so I just didn't even want to bother. So I did go ahead and take care of that. See how close our flower is to cutting. Should be close. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting transfer tape on all of my pieces as well. Normally, you guys know I use the clear tack um, transfer tape or medium tack transfer tape from 143 Vinyl. But today I'm gonna to be using the Caesar um, app tape just because I got a bunch of my mystery box and I have some to use. So we're gonna experiment with it and play with it. So I'm just gonna cut a few pieces that are big enough for my shapes. Back off. Cut this one like this. Scissors. Hey, Michael, welcome. You guys, everyone say hi to Mr. Crafty Pants. Mr. Crafty Pants is the nicest human being on planet Earth. He is also an amazing crafter as a cool bonus. <laughs> and just a really, really nice guy. I'm sure you guys probably know him since um, you've probably seen his YouTube tutorials, which are also amazing. So I'm so excited you're here, Michael. I was recutting a piece of my <laughs> 
design because I didn't cut deep enough into my glitter vinyl. Uh-oh. Well, oh my goodness, y'all. We're having problems. So that cut all the way through the backing. Well, we might be making a little bit of a switch here because I might have to switch things out a little bit. Let's see. Thanks, Lori. I know it's so, oh my gosh, you guys are going to love this. Okay. Well, now we're having issues. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but some of the pieces cut all the way through the backing, which is interesting because the test cut looked really good. So first of all, we'll get rid of this cut so that we don't cut over top of it again because glitter vinyl can be super, super hard to see. So we'll get rid of all of this. and set it aside and then it will decide what to do. Let's give this another try and the setting that I'm going to try next is glitter vinyl with, or well, I guess glitter vinyl more pressure didn't work. Hold on. We might have to go in the pressure list and take a look. We're getting a little technical for a live. <laughs> Normally I'd save this for an edited tutorial, but we're in too deep now. And now you guys need to see this project because I'm telling you, it's going to be so cute. <laughs> Mr. Crafty Pants said we made him blush. Well, you deserve it, Michael, because you really are the sweetest person on planet Earth. Okay, so let's take a look at this and you guys get to watch Alex problem solve in the middle of a live, okay? So I'm going to go into my materials list. And I'm actually gonna look at the pressure numbers assigned by Cricut. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Under material settings, and I have a whole video on this if you guys wanna see it more in depth um, because I explained it all there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna look at the pressure numbers assigned by Cricut to each of these settings. And I'm gonna find something in between the glitter vinyl setting because that wasn't enough pressure, but then light cardstock was too much. So we'll find something for right in the middle so I'll find um, glitter vinyl here, and it says the pressure setting was 85. So we need to find something higher than 85, but then we need to find something lower than 214. So that is quite a bit different. So that makes sense why that didn't work. So does that make sense? The light, car or excuse me, the glitter vinyl setting had 85 points of pressure, but the light cardstock setting had 214. So that's quite a leap, much, much larger than I really, really needed to make. So I probably want to look for something for a cut setting that has a pressure number and like the low 100s. So we don't want to go crazy high, you know, but we also don't want to go too close to the setting that didn't work. So let's see. Let's see what else this, um, there's a setting called heat transfer non cricket and it's at 113 points of pressure. So I'm going to try that. We'll browse all materials and look for heat transfer and in parentheses non cricket. And we'll try that setting and see if that works. All right, guys, cross your fingers, pray to the craft gods, pray to regular God. <laughs> And we'll see if we can get this cut setting to work. But luckily, we can start on the rest of the project. Hang on. I'm going to probably have to take that down. Because the top of my glitter vinyl is hanging out. So what I'm going to do, since I have the, um, the very top of my glitter sheet is kind of hanging over the sticky part. So I'm just gonna reach a little bit of painter's tape up here at the top so that it doesn't get caught on my machine. Because I've noticed that even though I really like my Cricut Maker 3, it does do some quirky stuff. And one of the things that I've noticed it does is that it will kind of pick up my vinyl if I am anywhere outside the sticky square of my mat. It like absolutely cannot hang. So I tend to um, tape my corners down and stuff like that. So that is an option, Roseanne, to cut twice, but I wasn't sure if that was quite enough pressure. 
I know. So Kim, you guys, you guys, I have to tell you something because Kim is hilarious. If you guys will, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I did an Instagram story a couple weeks ago and I said, hocus pocus, Lord Jesus, help me focus. It was just a joke. Um, I was joking about, you know, the hocus pocus joke. I need hot, I need coffee to focus. And I, I joked that I was giving y'all a free SVG idea and Kim actually turned it into a PNG and I have got to sublimate it on a shirt because Pocus Pocus, Lord Jesus, help me focus is basically the motto for like my entire life. So it will literally be perfect. And I will definitely share that when I do because you guys are just gonna love it. Okay, so now we're gonna start applying tape to the important stuff. So we can set up our wood round. Yes, hocus pocus, Lord Jesus, help me focus because boy, y'all know we all need Jesus and really I need a lot of focus. <laughs> Focusing is not my strong suit. So like I said, I'm using the Caesar. Um, I called it app tape, but really transfer tape is the same thing. Just because I had a, a roll of it from one of the mystery boxes and I thought I would give it a try. And I'll put a couple other pieces of transfer tape on here so that we can get at least our truck and our letters in place. Because the good thing is, even if we do have problems and for some reason, if I can't get the flowers to cut, um, I can always cut the sunflowers out of a different color and add them in. You know, as long as I have like the truck in place. So these are gonna be the wheels. And in fact, we're using Mr. Crafty Pants's one of his patterns for the wheels. I can't remember the name of this one, Michael, but this is one of your patterns. And we're using that for the wheels. Michael needs a shirt like that too. I think we all do, Michael, honestly. Like, are you even a crafter if you don't have like severe adult ADD? <laughs> it seems to be a common thread, at least in the people that I know in the craft world, we all have a good chunk of ADD. <laughs> All right, so we'll cut another piece. This is my little offset for Welcome Fall. So whenever I'm doing a big design like this, I always like to put those staple pieces on the wood round first. That way I know exactly what it's going to look like before I start getting the little pieces in there. That just makes it way easier. So the main pieces of this design, of course, are the truck and then the Welcome Fall. So we'll put those in place and then everything else will just follow suit. So put some transfer tape on and then we'll pray and see if <laughs> the flowers cut okay. It would be a good video shirt, Lindsay. I know, I need it desperately. It gives, I'm just glad you like it. Oh, I love it, Kim. And please do not think that because you sent it to me a long time ago, I don't love it because I absolutely do. I'm just over here being a hot mess per usual. <laughs> goodness you guys and actually speaking of hot mess that's the call that I have at four o'clock I am having a coaching call with my business coach who is literally amazing she saves my life and I'm so glad that I scheduled a call today because I need some help with September planning and my girl Hannah always has me covered she's so 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 helpful even though and she's not even in the crafting business she's just really really talented at what she does so she's a huge help all right so we've got transfer tape on some stuff. Let's see how our flowers did. Okay, y'all, so far so good. We're looking okay. Let's see how it looks. You can also, I don't wanna go too deep into settings without being able to show you guys, but you can also actually customize your settings to, um, be higher points of pressure. So for example, like my glitter vinyl has been consistently um, a little bit weaker than I think it was on my other maker. So I can go into the actual glitter vinyl setting and actually bump up the pressure so that I don't have to remember or memorize a new cut setting or anything. I can just keep reusing the same cut setting. So I may do that um, when I have some time to adjust it. Okay, y'all, let's see how she did. How's it gonna come off here? Well, goodness gracious. It's coming off easier already than it was last time. See how it's popping through a little bit? But it's just being difficult. Which y'all know, I mean, generally, glitter vinyl is always a little bit tougher to deal with than regular vinyl. That's just the nature of the beast because when you have a glittery film, 
It's just harder to deal with, but it's oh so pretty and totally worth it. But for the purposes of this live, <laughs> we got to make sure that we can get the project done. It's just really being difficult. Okay. Well, um, in normal cert, like in normal circumstances, if I wasn't live with you guys, I would probably just sit here and, and weed this because, you know, I have time and it's no big deal. But since I am on a time constraint, I'm going to try to find another cut setting that has a little bit higher pressure. And while we're getting this in place, I will try to cut it again. And hopefully it'll be a little easier to get off of that backing. because the um, sunflower just has so many parts. I don't want to have to push every single petal out. You know what I'm saying? Let me find my sheet of it, which is where? What did I do with that sheet of glitter vinyl? Oh, <laughs> y'all just flipped over on the floor. There we go. Okay, we'll do a better job of lining it up this time. And we're gonna have to go back into the cut settings and see what to use next. Thanks, Melanie, she said, fingers crossed. Okay, we'll go back this way. Kathy said, why not reverse weave? That's true, I could definitely try that. You're right, Kathy, let's give that a try. Before I give up on it, let's give it a shot. So. For reverse weeding, what you do is you take a piece of transfer tape and you put it over top the entire design and then you weed from the transfer tape instead of um, like weeding, the, weeding it away and then adding the transfer tape. That's true, Taya, that's a good, um, that's a good uh, suggestion, the holographic vinyl setting. We'll give reverse weeding a quick try, and if that doesn't work, we'll cut it again. Okay. Stick this right here. We do want to burnish it down pretty well so everything sticks. Then we'll pull the backing off like this. Oh, sorry. Let me send you all back to overhead. Okay. So that all came off well, which is a good sign. And so what we'll try and do is go like this. Oh, we might have a winner, friends. So I'm struggling not to stick my finger to the <laughs> to the vinyl, oh my gosh, you guys, we might have a winner. Who suggested that? Kathy, you're amazing. Thank you for suggesting this. It's working so much better. So if you guys can see what I'm doing, let me zoom you in so it's a little bit easier. What I did is I removed the backing and I have the transfer tape on the front. And then I pulled the backing off and I'm pulling the excess vinyl away from the transfer tape instead of weeding before I put the transfer tape onto the design, which is really helping keep everything like kind of anchored while I work. Now that was the larger sunflower. Let's see how the smaller sunflower does. So it definitely is a little bit tricky here with these smaller pieces. Oh, and that might have been my error because I kind of stuck that down there. Made that difficult. <laughs> okay. There we go. I'm used to not having to worry about the backing, so I just stuck it all down without any regard for the other sunflower. Poor guy. Okay. And it does have a bit of a, well, I did it again. Come on now. <laughs> it, 
It does have a um, kind of a funky shape because of the way it goes in the back of the truck. So if you guys are looking at that, like why does the sunflower look like that? It's supposed to because it the way it um, slices in with the pumpkin. You can see a petal there that we're missing. Let's see if we can help that little guy out. There we go. Yay, I think we got it. I may have lost a petal or two along the way, but I can always go back and add those in later. So that's a big help. I think that may go right there. Oh my gosh, you guys, it worked because Kathy is a genius and it looks so much better. So there you have it. So we're going to set this aside with the um, non-sticky side down and we'll get to it when we get to it and we'll start putting everything together. Okay. So, I also have some parchment paper that I'm going to use so that I can place everything. <clears throat> Let me get my voice a little deeper so y'all can hear me. <clears throat> We're going to use <clears throat> parchment paper underneath everything so that way when we stick it down onto the wood round, we stick it exactly where we want it to go. And that's a huge piece, but we can cut it down. So to use the parchment paper method, what you want to do is stick your vinyl, or excuse me, remove the backing from your vinyl like this. And then when you stick it to the parchment paper, you want to leave a bit of margin there at the top so that you have something to stick down to the actual surface and kind of almost use it like a hinge. If you guys have ever used the hinge method before, it's similar to that, except you're using the parchment paper because it's a little bit see-through so that you can place your design exactly. So we'll set this excess aside here. So basically what I'm going to do as I'm going to set my truck down onto my thing, but see how I can like move it around without having to commit to a particular spot. And then that way I can even look at like where the welcome fall is gonna be. And I need to move my truck down a little bit. And it just prevents you from sticking the vinyl down before you're ready. Because if you've worked with adhesive vinyl before, you know that sometimes the static electricity will kind of grab the vinyl before you're ready for it. And then you have to stick it there because if you pull it back off, you're gonna ruin it. So the parchment paper hack kind of um, helps you prevent that from happening. And all you do once you've stuck the top down, is you can flip it up and remove the parchment paper. And then you can just real slowly varnish your vinyl down. And I'll show you another example here when we do the wheels. So I'll remove this transfer tape. And when I do the wheels of the um, truck, you'll be able to see what I mean because we'll actually be lining the design up with something. So when we do this, we're able to move these around until both wheels are perfectly lined up on the wood round like this. And then you can press down that seam and super, super easily apply your wheels. And how stinking cute are the wheels out of that primitive vinyl? And it's so funny that I, um, I'm so glad that I use a Mr. Crafty print, Mr. Crafty pants print. Um, but when I saw that these wheels were solid on this truck, I just thought it looked kind of funny. So I was like, well, I need something else uh, to make sure that this like, you know, doesn't just look like a solid wheeled truck. So the um, pattern here fit perfectly, perfectly. I know I love the parchment paper hack too. Oh my gosh. I think, Kayla, that it started with the, oh, oh my gosh, my 
brain is blanking on the name. Who's the guy who started the rhinestone world? I think it was him that started the parchment paper hack, but I could be wrong. He was the first person that I saw teach about it. Yeah, and Irma learns the parchment paper hack from Mr. Crafty Pants. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move this design up a bit. Um, this is the offset for the Welcome Fall, so it's actually going to be the background. But I'm going to give it a little bit more space just to make sure that um, there's plenty of space taken up on this wood round. And I may end up adding like a floral piece at the top. I hadn't really planned to do that. But with all this space at the top, I may end up needing to just to make sure that everything is, um, you know, there's not a crazy amount of space left there at the top. And I'm loving how easily this vinyl sticks to this chalk paint. Um, sometimes you have to seal over top of paint and stuff like that, or over top, yeah, I guess paint on wood um, in order to put vinyl on it, but that did not end up being the case at all for this, which I love. Yep, you were just asking me, did I polyurethane first or is it just because the chalk paint, it stuck so well? Honestly, this is sticking perfectly just straight to the chalk paint. Um, and so some of that can be good pressure with your squeegee. Another thing that you can do that does make it a bit easier is you can um, you can use a vinyl ball from 143 Vinyl or a tennis ball and really rub it into the wood. And that also makes it easier to... Um, Stick your wood down to vinyl or stick your vinyl down to wood if you're having issues. So we're going to use the parchment paper hack again, and I'm going to be applying this green to the offset. I think somebody asked me about this green color. You know what? I'm going to have to look it up. It's a StarCraft HD color, and it's one of the newer ones, but I cannot think of it for the life of me. I want to say it's called, is it maybe swamp green or olive green or something like that? Do any of you guys remember? Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna remove my parchment paper and apply this just like this. Alrighty, now we can start working on the pumpkin and the sunflower. So hopefully, we got most of the sunflower petals. <laughs> I think we ended up missing a few, but I think we're going to be able to still work it out. And what I'll do is I'll just cut out more petals and add it to um, the project when I'm finished. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just fitting the larger sunflower down into these little areas of the chalk right here, since I know that these few do go down in there. And I guess I could use the parchment paper for this, but since it's not sticking, I think it'll be fine. There we go. And we will pull this off. Yeah, and I'm definitely missing some of the petals. I must have um, pulled them up with the first layer of vinyl. So I'll have to post a final picture later <laughs> after I finish this guy up. But we can add in our little pumpkin and the stem and then we'll be all good to go. So I'll go ahead and add this to some parchment paper so that I can move it around as well because it is supposed to fit in pretty closely with the uh, sunflower. Okay. So I think it's really tough for you guys to see, but I think the pumpkin fit in right here. Something like that. Oh gosh, and I wish I would have moved the welcome fall up a little bit. I didn't realize it was gonna stick up that far. That's all right. And last but not least, oh, this is a bigger piece, okay. 
So we'll put some transfer tape over top of this guy. And luckily I was re able to reuse a lot of my pieces, not every single piece, but luckily I didn't have to cut too, too much for all these other ones. I may end up cutting some of that top off a little bit. Oh, no, nope. I think it'll just perfectly fit in there. So we'll use parchment paper again, just in case we need it. Okay, okay, so it is swamp green. Yeah, that's what it's called then. I knew it was a funky name, Heather, but I couldn't exactly remember what it was called. Swamp green sounds right to me. And actually what I'm gonna do, y'all, is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top of that little stem off. That way, um, when I put it on the pumpkin, it doesn't end up running into my Hello Fall. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that the vinyl is kind of stuck to the parchment paper. The tricky thing is that the parchment paper doesn't let the vinyl stick to it, which is its whole purpose, but that can sometimes make it a little bit difficult when you're moving a bunch of pieces around. There we go. So I know it's really challenging for you guys to see. You can kind of see the orange through the uh, parchment paper, but I'm lining up the stem of the pumpkin over here in the center of the pumpkin, of course, but then I need to line up the leaves and it looks like they're not really working that well with my, uh, with my sunflower petals. So what I might do is cut this piece off so I can place it individually. And then I can just place these guys right here. So I know these are gonna look fine. So. Those fit perfectly. And I use the um, Swamp Green for the Welcome Fall as well as for the uh, stem and leaves just so you guys know, in case you're looking at colors. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm just going to, I think this is probably the, the little petal that was supposed to go around. Stick that leaf right there. And we are all set. So obviously I missed a couple of the glitter sunflower pieces that I'll have to recut and place around there. But I think you guys can use your imagination and see how cute this would be, right? <laughs> It turned out mostly cute, even though we had some problems. So real quickly before I go, um, I will explain what I'm going to do, but I don't have time to do it, unfortunately, guys. So sorry about that because I've got to make sure I get to my call. But I'm going to take some twine and I will glue one side to the back. Then I'll string all of my beads on there. And then that way I won't, well, I guess I will have to cut some of it. So I'll cut a piece that's way, way longer than I'm gonna need it. Then I'll string all my beads on there. And then of course I'll glue the other side. And I may even create knots before I glue it, something like this, so that I don't have to worry about the beads slipping all the way down and I can keep them you know, nice and tight. But I'll glue it like that. And then I'll put all the beads on and then I'll knot the other side and glue it down like this. So I'll have to finish this piece after my call since I do have to run, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and um, working through all this and allowing me to just, you know, be a human being and sometimes things don't work out the way that we want them to, you know? I'm a, I'm a human just like all of you and I have lots of crafts, craft mistakes as you can see. Oh yes, and Kayla did um, remind me, thank you so much. There are two new bundles out at 143. So if you are all in the fall spirit of crafting like I am, you may wanna go check those out. They released a Glitter HTV fall bundle as well as an Easy Weed fall bundle. So you may wanna go check those. Kayla linked them in the description. Um, so if you wanna go check those out, you can also save 5% even though those are not included in the sale today. You can, um, as long as you don't use more than one coupon code on your order, you can use Alex5 to save 5% off those bundles. Having problems on a live actually helps us figure out what to do if we have problems, so thanks. 
<laughs> Thank you for bearing with me because I have to be honest, it's a little embarrassing when I have these problems, but you know, honestly guys, it's just, it's just human, you know? And I'm glad that you guys understand and you know what I mean because I know that you've been there too. So I'll definitely fix it up. Uh, yeah, if you guys wanna go check out those bundles, then um, definitely do that. Kayla put them in the comments for you and you can use the code Alex5 to save 5% off of that part, of course, as long as you're not using another sale coupon code. Oh, I love you guys too. Thank you so much for your time and hanging out with you. And I'm sure I will see you soon. Don't forget to enter the giveaway, which is also pinned.